Fire is a chain reaction resulting from three factors. What are they? The basics of combustion are fuel, oxygen, and heat. Together they produce a chemical chain reaction. So this process is represented as the fire tetrahedron. If any of these elements is removed from the equation, the fire goes out. Fires, which consist of things termed ordinary combustibles, such as wood, paper, cloth, plastic, or rubber, are identified as Class A fires. This also includes things found out of doors, like trees, basically anything that leaves an ash after burning. On the other hand, combustible liquids, such as gasoline, are termed Class B fires when ignited. So are other flammable liquids, such as oil, paint, grease, and solvents. As you probably have guessed, natural gas and propane also come under the heading of Class B fires when burning. Depending on what is burning, you may have a combination of classes of fires. A Class B gas fire may be igniting other combustibles, so there's also a Class A fire happening concurrently. When fires are caused by or involve electricity, the materials and equipment which are burning come under the Class C heading. Cables, wires, motors, machinery, anything which is energized, that is, which has power running through it and continues to be the heat source, results in a Class C fire. The safest way to extinguish the fire is to de-energize the circuit. Metals which burn at extremely high temperatures, over 3,000 degrees, comprise the Class D fires list. This includes zinc, aluminum, sodium, titanium, and magnesium. In general, most metals whose names end in IUM. When gas is burning outdoors, clear thinking is critical because you're dealing with multiple factors and exposures which all have to be accounted for. Rushing into action too quickly can be a recipe for disaster. Always keep in mind that gas can migrate, be moved by wind or suppressed by moisture. So utilize your senses and be sure you're upwind of the gas fire. This factor extends to how you make the entire area safe through evacuation and site control measures. So what are the ways burning gas can be extinguished? Water is usually ineffective in putting out a natural gas fire. Advances in technology have created dry chemical extinguishers which generate a powder spray at high velocity. By utilizing the proper technique, a natural gas fire may be brought under control. But the most effective and safest way to eliminate the fire is by shutting off the supply. Now this presents its own set of problems. As we stated earlier, the further you move from the source of the hazard, the greater the potential for creating additional problems by disconnecting utility service over a wide range. Only utility company specialists familiar with the gas system should close down an in-ground valve. If you're a firefighter, your training has taught you to put out fires as quickly as possible. But with natural gas fires, this is often the wrong course to take. While it may be the most difficult thing to do, in this situation, you may need to step back and wait for the utility company to arrive. So good judgment comes into play in making a sound decision. The best course of action may be to protect all the exposures but let the gas fire burn until the utility company is able to extinguish the fire by shutting down the fuel source. Gas which is burning will not explode. Something to keep in mind, there is residual gas in the pipe, so this will take some time to burn off and dissipate. And while it's now a more controlled situation, with the fuel source shut off, because of the nature of natural gas, you need to stay alert to the dangers of migration and reignition. Along this line, keep your protective gear on until the utility company's done its work 
and gives an all clear to the incident commander that the danger of fire and explosion has passed. And there are other considerations. In almost every case, electric utilities will also be occupying or near the same area, especially if the utility company supplies both gas and electric. So another potential hazard is electrical wire, especially if the fire is in an underground trench, also known as a common trench, which may house other utilities as well. Dense smoke often has carbon particles and moisture in it, which can become energized and produce a potentially lethal arc. If overhead wires are present and the volume of fire is great enough, the wire's coating can burn and the wire may fall, leaving you with two extremely dangerous hazards. One additional aspect to consider, when the burning gas is propane, all the procedures we've outlined also apply. And as with natural gas, when there's no immediate danger present to surrounding areas, let the propane burn itself out. 